Hello folks, welcome back to the new tube. If you saw our last episode, you might recognize that Morgan and I are sitting in almost the same spot. Well, we are. Well, I moved a little. Yeah. <laughs> and I did change the camera <laughs> angle ever so slightly. Uh, but we were talking about rosés and, and food, but we realized we'd finished the segment without actually having a bite of this wonderful ravioli we made it. So what we have here is a uh, is the house-made ravioli. We always have a house-made ravioli on the menu. This one is rhubarb, garlic, chev, lovage with a creamy lovage sauce. What's lovage? lovage? I'm lovage. sorry. It's a green. Oh. It kind of looks like, uh, what's it look like? Oh, it's a frondy kind of, uh, it's not really like lettuce, but it's uh, sort of leaves. It's a big tall thing. It oh. has a little bit of a, oh, it's almost a minty overtone, mm -hmm. um, but it's very, very rich and flavorful. Hmm. That's going to be my food word of the day. It's great, lovage. In, great in soup and sauces. Lovage has, it does have a great name. Oh. I love Lovage. <laughs> uh, no songs today. Oh, sorry. <laughs> How often does Deb change her menu? About Deb once a month. Once a month? Every, every three, four weeks. Um, the reason she does that is because um, we use a lot of local products. In fact, once we get into the spring, like we are now, about 90% of what ends up on the plate is local. And, and I think for all the efforts that you and Deb and the Bistro do to support local agriculture. I think a lot of viewers to the new tube and people who come to the area aren't familiar with the extent of, of farming in our region and, and that so many things are grown literally in wineries' backyards. There's a whole wave of new farmers with, with small farms, maybe a couple of acres or a few dozen acres. Um, and their markets are not nationwide markets, but their markets right in their backyard. The local restaurants, um, maybe restaurants in New York City, maybe two, three, four hours away max. So a lot of this produce goes into the ground, comes out of the ground, and <laughs> goes back into the ground, really in a very narrow sort of mm -hmm. local area. So we do have a bounty of, of farms and, and food products that someone comes up, they're not only tasting local wine, but it's really the local food part too. It's Oh yeah, I mean one of Deb's goals, and our goal together with wine and food, is to give in, in one sitting at, at the bistro, we have an entire Finger Lakes experience, mm -hmm. starting with wine, starting with your appetizer and through your meal, with everything, almost everything, on your plate that you're consuming, coming from literally places where you can see, mm -hmm. and your and your journeys right around the winery. It's fun. Yeah, so some people have asked, does the Finger Lakes have kind of a food theme? Is there are there any trends that you see uh, uh, coming out in terms of a style? Good question. Um, you, you would think there would be, and I think there is. Mm -hmm. um, it's not something that's happening really quickly. It's something that will happen over time. I mean, if you look um, at any mature wine region in the world, you will notice that the food in the region pairs extremely well with the wine. Mm -hmm. And it's no coincidence. But it's not because somebody scratched their head one day and said, well, what do we have to do to make this wine and food go together and, and did it? It happened over years or sometimes over decades or centuries where um, particular grape varieties were chosen to, to grow, both because of the way they, how they grew and the personal preferences of the people. And probably they made wines in the, in the way that paired with the food they happened to be eating at the time. But then as the wines evolved, well, the cuisine might change a little to go better with it. So it's this back and forth sort of chicken and egg relationship between wine and food in any, any region. And the exciting thing in the Finger Lakes is um, the very beginning stages of that evolution of mm -hmm. wine and food is happening right now, and it's happening in a way that's very dynamic. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in wine, there is this idea of, of terroir and place. How much do you think that impacts the, f the food angles? I mean, do you, do you get a sense that Things that are grown and produced locally locally have a sense of sense of place, distinct flavors, or better well, the, quality. The idea of character and flavors and personality of the food, as well as the wine, I think that's a real a real uh, phenomenon as well. Um, and it's one that, as we become better at growing, well, what we see in the wine is we be, as we become better at growing grapes and better at winemaking. Um, all the differences, subtle differences between regions and subregions start to emerge because there comes this level of consistency um, that allows those subtle variations to transcend our human impact on the process. Um, and the same probably would be happening with food. If you look at fruits, for example, from the Finger Lakes, cherries, uh, 
strawberries, uh, peaches, apricots. Um, boy, this is a region that produces fruits like that with intense flavors. And part of it has to do with a little bit cooler growing region than a lot of the traditional places where we get those fruits now. Hmm. Fascinating. Do you think there will be uh, development of more fruit wines? Possibly. Um, some a really exciting development that we're seeing now um, in a couple of places in the Finger Lakes is not so much making wine from fruit, but actually making very elegant distilled spirits. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a long tradition in taking fruits and making um, fruit brandies and, and uh, various other very delectable beverages. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, happening in a couple of places now right here in the Finger Lakes. In fact, <laughs> just down the road from us, three or four miles, mm -hmm. the Finger Lakes Distilling should be opening within weeks with a great, great presentation of products. So has Brian given a date yet? Uh, I heard hopefully blank, 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 but I think yeah. uh, the target is sometime in July. Yeah, very exciting for the region. Yeah. It's a spectacular building. He's invested in the equipment and brought up a master distiller. And, um, I think his copper still wasn't it made abroad, or there's some history with that. Well, it's a fantastic machine. Now, I'm not an expert on distilling, but um, I went up a few days ago, met with. Um, he and his, and his distiller, um, they're both Mackenzie's. Yeah, not, not related. Not related. <laughs> <laughs> they're very clear to let you know that they're not related. Well, you would know that when you first meet them. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm not an expert, but the um, the whole the whole uh, facility, the equipment, and the attitude and obvious expertise mm -hmm. of both of them in, in the respective areas in, in the operation is very impressive. Yeah, we're. I mean, the region is really excited and. You no, know, it's it's a good addition, mm -hmm. I think. Okay, well, cheers again. Cheers. <laughs>